Praise the Lord, everybody. Okay, let me try it one more time. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is good to be here. I don't know. I, I left 100-degree weather. I should have brought it with me. And um, we showed up yesterday, and it was, it was just very breezy. And then this morning, it was very cold. And then it got nice and warm. But I am I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited because I recognize that God has something to say to each one of us. And I'm excited about God speaking to us. The, the first thing I want to say is I, I, I deem it a privilege to be on this side of the world. I really do. Um, right now, I, my, my wife is at work, my, my daughter is doing what she's doing, whatever, we're five hours behind, and I'm trying to keep up, and this jet lag, I, I, I was, you know, I was, it's not going to hit me, this jet lag is not going to hit me, it hit me, I mean, it hit me really, really good, and so I, I, I wondered, you know, how do I do this, because I don't drink coffee, so I thought maybe if I drank a Pepsi, but then I don't want to get baptized again, and um, <laughs> But I recognize that uh, in order for me to stay up, I need to, I need to sleep. I need to stay up and then sleep and then get up early. I don't know what it is. In light of that, I am glad to be here. I, w- I want to first of all simply say that um, I-, I didn't come to preach to y'all today. Is that, is that all right? You know, I just think that, that, that preaching is beautiful, but sometimes, um, sometimes when we preach, sometimes when we preach, we, we can kind of preach over you guys. And, and I recognize that the word is so important that if we miss the word, if we miss the word, if you get the preaching and miss the word, that's a problem. So if, if, I, if, if I just talk to you a little bit and help you understand, you know, um, what your identity may be, then maybe, just maybe, when you leave here, you'll get it. Maybe when you leave here, you'll get it. And I want to share this with you, this word, because I believe that this word is going to help us become ID'd in the entity where you are and where you'll get it. Father, I'm asking you that as we get into this word that it be about you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I I left my room just now. While I was leaving my room, my my son said, Dad, what are you doing with the passports? I said, son, I'm hiding it. He said, well, why are you hiding it? I said, well, I need you. (laughs) Brother, if we lose this, we ain't getting back home. And he said, well, well, if you lose the passports, if we lose the passports, then how would we get back home? And my answer was, you know, I really don't know. Because what I recognize is in order for me to get here, it didn't take a driver's license. Now, now, now some of you may be like, what are you, what are you talking about? Well, if I'm at home and I want to get to Atlanta, I want to get to California, I want to get to the, the, one of the, the, the states, I can get through using my driver's license. But I can't, well, boy, I'm, I'm already excited. I said I was going to preach, right? But I cannot go overseas without my passport. There's a difference between the two IDs. One ID keeps you local. The other ID takes you away from your locality. What I mean is, some of you right now are living in your identity, and you're telling us, you're telling the church, you're telling God, I'm good with my ID. That's going to leave you local. But if you get the other identity, which is the passport, the one that passes your sins, the one that passes, come on now, the the one that will help you pass your your foolishness, that's the passport you're looking for. Because too many of us like our local IDs, the local ID that gets you in the club. I ain't scared of y'all. <laughs> the ID that gets you that drink. The other day I went to get a, I went to get a soda. And um, I did. It was a soda. Yeah. And, and it's funny that, that it, the person said to me, well, the person next to me had, was buying something. You know, I, I still have friends. <laughs> well, I have mercy. And so the, 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 the man said, I, I have to card you. I got to ID you. I got to card you. I felt so good. I felt good. He had to card me. I mean, that mean I look somewhere 25 that he had to card me. I'm good. But the fact of the matter is that he had to ID me. He had to card me because he could not give me something without the proper ID. Y'all not hearing me yet. He could not give me what I wanted because it takes a certain ID to get you where you need to go. 
And, and, and when my son said it, I was leaving, and he said, well, why are you hiding it? I said, look, not everyone on this campground is ID'd. Oh, boy. Yeah, n- not everyone in the church is ID'd the same way. Come on now. Not everyone, I believe that I'm, I believe that I'm supposed to leave my door cracked and y'all not go in my room. I believe that I'm supposed to, to at least leave my belongings everywhere and no one is supposed to trouble it because it's not yours. But you got to understand that the wheat and the tares grow together. And so I, I locked my room, but just in case someone knows how to pick a lock among us, I took the passports and I hid it just in case you want to take the PlayStation, it's there, pray for me. Take, I mean, anything you want to take, take it. Take the food, take anything, take the money on the table, it's still on the table. But the passports, leave, I mean, you can't find where I put the passports so that when it's time for me to leave from this place, like leave from this earth, I'll be ID'd. Yeah. Come on now, stay with me. And, and, and when I look at this, I recognize that it is important what your identification is. But I recognize that a lot of us as young people or young adults, I'm not a young adult anymore. Man, I'm not a young adult anymore. I'm, I'm not a young adult anymore. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm not a young adult anymore. Y'all as young adults got to recognize that part of the things that keep you away from, listen, that keeps you away from the church is that the church is trying to ID you in their entity. Wow. Wow. But, all right, let me, I feel like I got to go like Sesame Street. Let, stay with me, stay with me. The, the entity that we love, we're ID'd into it. Let me give you an example. Some of you go with some, some of you, are, you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend that they're the one that ID you. If you're not with them, you don't feel that you're ID'd properly. I need you to understand, I can't wait till we come to the end of this, but I need you to understand that no person, no man, no woman, or no church, watch this, no church should ID you. There is no entity that IDs you. So, so some of us may be saying, oh, you know what? You don't look like a Christian. You don't look like an Adventist. You don't look like a so-and-so. But you're not here to look like a church. Wow. You're here to look like, come on now, stay with me. Some of y'all are like, oh, did he just say that? He doesn't want to come back. <laughs> but you're not here to look like the church. You're supposed to look like Christ. And then as you look like Christ, you then look like the church of Christians who are in the church. You see, young people don't like, let me tell you, young people and young adults, we don't like hypocrisy at all. And that's one of the reasons why our churches are not growing today, because you are afraid to be a part of people who are trying to make you like them. And what God is simply saying is, I'm not trying to make you like other people. I want you to be like me. But we're losing our young adults, we're losing our young people, and I want to be clear, we're, us- we're losing our young people in their minds. Because young people, if this is still mostly, I'm just stay with me, mostly a Caribbean, if it's mostly Caribbean, young people have got to go to church. A- amen, speaker. <laughs> when I was growing up, even now, you, I'm just saying, you Caribbean, you talk, I don't want to go, you can't say I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go to church. Really? That, re- can you imagine? Telling your folks you don't want to go to church? When I was growing up, you couldn't tell your mother that. I'm tired. I want to go to church. If you have children and you tell your children you don't have to go to church today, something wrong with you. <laughs> but I can't imagine telling my parents I don't feel like going to church. It's young adults that are leaving the church. It's divorcees that's leaving the church. It's not young people. Young people leave the church in their heads. They're just being in church like this. Talk, preacher. Talk, because I ain't listening. Young adults don't show up. Why? Because you got money to sin. Oh, boy. When you have a church filled with young adults, listen closely, filled with young adults, that is awesome. But young adults don't go to meetings. Young adults don't go to Wednesday night prayer meeting. Young adults don't go to Sabbath school. They come for the show. If you ain't got a show, you ain't coming. And it's amazing that when the church comes together, they say, Pastor Graham, what should we do about our young people today? I don't know, but maybe the church should figure out what they should do so that the young people will be attracted to God. Let me, please, let me give an example. Young lady got pregnant in, in our church because that's what happens. I'm going to just stop right there. Do, do you know that people get pregnant all the time? But the church acts like... 
No, I'm serious. I mean, I mean, people get pregnant all the time. Which means people are having sex all the time. You know what I mean? Hey, have sex all the time. I mean, this, it's, it happens. I mean, it really happens. You know what I'm saying? You ever drove down a car and there was an accident? You ever drove down a street and there was an accident? You saw an accident? It happens. So does sex. And some of us act like it is the worst sin in the world. You know, God never qualified sex as the worst sin in the world. Oh, my goodness. Oh, no, no. He call, I mean, you ever, you ever see Jesus cuss out people? He never cuss out someone who, who, who's a whore. He doesn't curse out whores. He'd be like, oh, come here. Jesus cuss out hip, 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 hypocrites. That's what Jesus cuss out. Oh, you vipers. That's not really what he wanted to say. Oh, you vipers. Generation of wickedness. He's never talked to someone who was pregnant early and said, oh, you, you viper. <laughs> He's always cussing out leaders. Uh-oh, did I say that? Always cussing out leaders. They come and ask him questions. What should you do? If this happened, what would you do? I was in a meeting one day, and this girl got pregnant from our church. And one, one of the elders said, what should we do with her? I said, I don't know, because I didn't do it to her. <laughs> that was my answer. I didn't do it. What do you mean with her? Man, I got a wife I got to worry about, and I got to worry about this girl too? I'm not worried, really. I mean, what, what should, should we take her, should we take away, listen, should we take away her position from church? Why? Because she's pregnant? No, oh, hold on a second. Let me be clear. Should we take away her position from church because she's pregnant? Or, or, or is it you are, listen, or you are afraid that it may be an epidemic so the entity you're in will look bad? I want to be clear because I know that the reason why we disfellowship folks Come on, say, why we this fellowship folk, we this fellowship folks, not because we're afraid that the foolishness is going to spread. That's really, that's, you know, we should really be this fellowship folk because, honestly, because they're not rightly representing God in the entity. But after nine months, that's it. Really, after nine months, that's it. Did you know that? After nine months, that's it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're probably wondering what kind of church this guy come from. I'm, I'm trying to under, I want you to understand that your identification is not folded in 28 fundamental doctrines. Do you know that when we baptize folks, we, we should not be testing them on 28 fundamental doctrines because no one can reach it? Oh, my goodness. Listen, I'm fine, right? No, I didn't mean I'm okay. I said, I'm fine. <laughs> Y'all look at me like, okay, he's not coughing. That's not what I mean. I look good. You don't have to believe it. I do. Yeah. Someone's like, oh, man, you're a short guy. Yeah, but I look good. <laughs> My son said to me the other day, Dad, you know, I mean, am I going to bald one day? I said, son, don't worry about it. Bald is good. But the truth, the truth of the matter is that too often, watch this now, too often our mindset simply is, is we're ID'd based on what we look like, what the church looks like, instead of what God wants you to look like. Yeah. Now, I made, I made this comment, I want to be very clear about this, that I'm not saying that anything should happen in our church and it be undone. But what I'm saying is that too often we put away what should be checked. One more. Uh, I, I forgot this is streamed. One fellow from my church decided to call everyone to have a meeting. No, everybody. Call everyone. I'm going to have a meeting with everyone. He's not the pastor. I'm going to have a meeting with everyone. <laughs> now, I got to tell you, one of the worst things in the world is the pastor. I, I don't want anyone to ever feel like pastoring is the greatest thing in the world. I recognize that pastoring is great when you serve. You're not the leader. The people are. Uh, so my church is successful because they make the decision. So when things go bad, it was you. <laughs> Simple. And it's amazing that when this thing was going around church, this thing was going around church, this thing was going around church, they said to me, Pastor, what are we going to do? I mean, emails went out and emails went out. It was so unstoppable. It was crazy. Pastor, what are you going to do? And I sat down with the brother and I said, listen, brother, seriously, um, can, you, can you sit with the elders and talk to us about what your issues are? Things went bad already. My man made a comment. He said, well, the pastor, I would do it again. So I just said, okay, no problem. Give me your key. 
So give me your key. Took the key. And not only did I take the key, but I, I put in for censorship. Somebody called me and said, you censored someone in church for just saying something? No, for dividing. Amen. You, do you know that in, if you're going to go by the rule book, if you're going by the rule book, anytime you sit at the table after church and they cut, cut somebody out at the dinner table at Sabbath, holy day, they should be censored. But you're not going to censor your friend because we smile. We laugh. You know, sister so-and-so, so-and-so, we'd be like, word. I dare you to say, hey, listen, you know, I don't really want to hear it. Then you would be ID'd as, come on, someone who's not down with the crew that cusses folk out. And I want you to understand as we go into this text that too many of our young adults leave the church simply because you don't know who to be identified with. Let me say this again before we go into that. I, I want to be clear that I am identified, I'm identified as Wendy's husband. That's my wife, Wendy. Now, now I, I'm going to tell you right now, she's a little taller than me. That's her problem, not mine. <laughs> I think she's beautiful in the whole night. I, I, but I... I being married to her, my problem was, and, and sometimes, sometimes, I'm not over that yet. I'm going to go back to the text that y'all used earlier before. One of, one of the problems I have is that, you know, every now and then, when, you know, every day when I give her a kiss goodbye, I got to, I got to, she don't never do like this. She always, so I got, you know, so I got to, so, so I got, you mm. But then I noticed that what was cool for me is that's one down, but I got two more kids. They're shorter than me. I'm good. Running the house. I'm good. I'm saying whatever I want to say. This, you know, um, yesterday when I left to fly here, I forgot a jacket. And I said, man, I forgot my jacket. My son walking in the airport. This is what he says to me. This is what that little brute said to me. He said, don't worry, Dad. You can borrow one of mine. <laughs> and so I wore his this morning. <laughs> <laughs> the fact of the matter is, I'm identified as her husband. So, uh, so when I was first dating her, honestly, when I first dated her, I went to Payless Shoes. If you go to Payless, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. But she was like, hey, man, yo, yo, you date, we dating now. You got to work that out. So if you want me to work it out, you better buy my shoes if you're going to work that out. She bought me a pair of shoes. I said, you know that old Jamaican thing, if you buy a shoe for someone, they walk out on you? I'm still around. I'm still around. So, I, so she got the shoes, so-and-so, whatever. Then... I bought this suit. This is what happened when I came to England 12 years ago. 12 years ago, I came to England. I was talking to this guy. I forgot his name. I don't remember his name. He said, Pastor, I'm going to take you to buy a suit. I was like, where? For real? I mean, why didn't they just tell me that I look ugly in the suits earlier? <laughs> Took me, and he said, this is the Euro look. This is about 12 years ago, 12 years ago. What it's the look for us is the slim fit, slim fit. So I go home. Listen, I go home. And I'm wearing this slim fit suit when no one else is wearing it. They're calling me, oh, look at gay pastor. Look at the gay pastor. <laughs> you know, and I ain't near gay. Nah, 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 gay. <laughs> look at, look at pastor, look at pastor. That. And, and I remember my wife said, I like this one and this one, but I don't like this suit. Because I bought three of them from here. <laughs> no, no, this is Wales. And so here we go. So here it is that I'm wearing it. And my wife said, I don't like that suit. And I said, honey, I like the way it looks. I mean, I, I thought... It looked good. And I said, honey, I, I'm, I'm feeling this, man. I'm feeling this. She was like, I don't like it. I'm feeling this. And I said, you know, I'm going to church in it anyway. She said, honey, I don't like that suit. You know what? She, when she said, honey, she said, you ain't getting none. <laughs> I'm, I'm, who am I talking to? She, she said, honey, in the honey, it says, walk out that door with that suit on. Tonight, you ain't getting none. Are you with me now? Yeah. Oh, my gracious. Let me, can, I get a, can I get a commercial? I'm married. Anybody here married? Just say amen. amen. Okay, sex is good. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's not dirty. It's beautiful. Makes you sleep better. This is the young adult crew. I got to check y'all tomorrow. I don't even know if you're ready for tomorrow. In this, I recognize that she was saying to me that if you go out there like that, what you are is who I am. Wow. You're identified as mine. Yep. 
And I'm like, what are you saying to me? So the other day, she put on makeup in the whole nine. Makeup, she put on makeup. I mean, makeup. I'm into MAC makeup. Just stay with me. And she put on makeup in the whole nine. She put her, you know, she had her dress coming all down. She was like, she's like, Paul, you like the way I look? I said, yeah. She puts her hair down. You like the way I look? Yeah. She put her hair up. You like the way I look? Yeah. Is this too much makeup? No. <laughs> Y'all ain't getting me yet. Do you like blue? Yeah. <laughs> Paul, I have spots all over my face. Yeah. Don't be dumb, guys. Whatever she says, it works. For me, I have to look a certain way before she says, you represent me. Are you with me so far? Let me, share, let me share this with you. The Word of God tells us, the Word of God tells us that we're losing our people along the way. And I'm going to share this with you. I love you because this is camp meeting. Uh, it, it, it's straight up. We're losing our young people. We're losing our young adults because our camp, our camp doesn't know how to deal with sinners. We don't know how to deal with sinners. We don't know how to deal with people that sin differently from us. You didn't hear what I just said. I didn't say that we don't know how to deal with people who sin. We said we don't know how to deal with people who sin differently from us. You hear what Paul just said in Corinthians, just now, 2 Corinthians? The word was just given to us that three times, three times I asked God to take this thing away from me, and we keep teaching y'all that it was his eyesight. Anybody ever heard that? We keep telling y'all, listen, I want y'all to stay with me. We keep telling you guys that the, what happened to Paul, what Paul was saying, take care of this infirmity for me. When you look at the original language, it wasn't a health problem. Paul calls himself the chief of sinners. You know what it is to be the chief? The chief of sinners. You know what it is to be the chief <laughs> of sinners? We don't even look at that. We always talk, oh, and Paul calls himself the chief of sinners. That means he's the baddest of the baddest of the worst of the worst, and he's still preaching. This is why it kills me. It kills me. No, 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 don't say that. Well, I want you to understand that he calls himself, he always says that every time I try to do right, evil presents itself. This is the same guy we're talking about who then says, take this thing away from me. Three times I ask you to get that girl out my face. Come on now. Three times I ask you, Lord, to let the smell of weed get out of my mind. Three times I ask you to take that taste of liquor out of my... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you that, that the church, the camp, this place is for people who sin differently. See, now, if I gossip, it's okay because we all do it. We not return the faithful tithe. We all do that. But if, I, if I'm found out having, come on now, having weed in my pocket, there's a problem. There's a... No, no, wait, hold on, hold on. Time out. That's a, that's a, that's a problem. <laughs> that's, that's a problem. You know, the other day I, when I landed, I went to, I'm not going to tell you whose house I went to. I went to this sister named Andrew's house. And when I was there, <laughs> we're getting ready to leave. All of us were getting ready to leave. Or, you know, we're piling up, getting ready to leave. And I'm like, I'm like, is that Ken E-Bus? <laughs> She's like, yeah, yeah, you know. D d I'm, uh, listen, yeah, yeah, you know, this is a, in, in, you know, you, you can have a small portion. Is that correct? Is that true in England? In, in, you're not allowed to have a small portion? I'm sorry, say it again? They're discussing it? Oh, so somebody, oh, somebody got baptized early. I understand. <laughs> so I'm smelling this bad boy, and, and I'm wondering, man, who could be so brazen? You know, straight up, brazen. <laughs> See, because I know weed is illegal. You know what I'm saying? I mean, weed is illegal. Where I'm from, weed is illegal. You can't just be talking about, yo, what's up? Some of y'all know you got to hold it in. Look at y'all Adventists. Boy, I tell you right now. Somebody look and say, you know how to do that. No, I, I watch enough TV. Let's go, let's go, let's go. It's important to understand that, that we all sin differently. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 15, I want you to understand and look at this word, and I promise you, please, I promise you, this is camp meeting. Don't just play afterwards, hang out afterwards. Take some time before you go to bed and look at this text, what this text is saying. The word of God is telling us in this word, in this word, wherever I put it, there we go, that in Luke chapter 15, the Bible says, and I want you to hear this because this happens at every church service that you go to. The word of God says, then drew near unto him, who's him, Jesus, all the publicans and sinners to hear him and the Pharisees and scribes murmured saying this man receiveth sinners and eats with them well hold on a second are you telling me that the church people are upset 
because Jesus is hanging out with publicans and sinners? Yes. No, I, want you, I, don't, I don't want you to ever miss that. Don't miss that the church is upset because you're hanging out with people in your jobs. Let me tell you, if I were single again, 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 and I'm working not as a pastor but somewhere else, and someone says to me, I'd like to take you to McDonald's on a date. If a woman said to me, I'd like to take you to McDonald's on a date. All right. I don't like McDonald's. Somewhere um, on a date. I can't tell the person no because I'm Adventist and you're not. Oh, I'm in trouble. I believe the greatest form of evangelism is, a la- oh, is going on a date with someone who's not like you. I didn't say you need to go on two. <laughs> By the first one, you should have been ID'd as a Christian. Come on now, stay with me now. I need you to understand that too often we seclude ourselves from other people because our ID says we're greater than someone else. Oh, be careful. You're not greater than anybody else. You're not better than anybody else. You're better off, but you're not better than. And in this word, listen closely, in this word, the word is telling us even now that, 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 that God is looking at this church and saying there are Pharisees and scribes, Pharisees and scribes, Pharisees are people like me. I'm a Pharisee. I'm good. I'm Pharisee. Y'all can say, oh, he's Pharisee. I'm Pharisee. I believe in everything that the word of God says. I'm a Pharisee. That's all that a Pharisee is. Someone who follows the Bible to a T. I'm a a Pharisee. But then you have scribes. Scribes are individuals who take the word of God and twist it, Mm. twist it so that you can get away with certain things. Oh, hold on a second. We have so many scribes in our church today. So many scribes. They rewrite the laws. Come on, can I give you one? Can I give you one? Can I give one? I believe in the Sabbath. Come on, I believe in the Sabbath. Now, for those who ain't got no job, you don't believe in the Sabbath. If you got a hard job, you love the Sabbath. If you got kids, you love the Sabbath. I ain't talking about the new folks. You know what I'm saying? I'm not talking about new folks who don't understand the Sabbath. Sabbath is a day of just chill. Hey, hey, what are you running for? It's the Sabbath. You got all kinds of excuses. <laughs> Can't cook today. It's the Sabbath. No sex today. It's the, nah, we do that. Anyway, listen. <laughs> it's important to understand. Watch this now. It's important to understand that somebody takes the law and they write it differently. God never said this. God said that. God said the other. When since you were God to make laws and make God liable for the laws you made? I mean, I don't know where some of these rules come from. It's amazing because the Ten Commandments stands on its own. Come on now. The Decalogue stands on its own. The first five books of the Word of God stands on its own. The, the prophet stands on its own. I'm, I'm, stay with me. The four Gospels stands on its own. The letters of Paul stands on its own. Revelation and whatnot stands on its own. When since you were the writers. And I want you to understand that the Bible is telling us that you have Pharisees and scribes and they're upset because you're hanging with people that sin differently than them. Mm. Whoo! Stay with me. Hold on. Stay with me. So when I look at the story, God says, Jesus says, oh, I'm, oh, I, oh I get it. I get it. You've identified the sinners but didn't look at yourself. I'm tired of people identifying sinners all the time, identifying sinners. Oh, that person did this and that person did that. I want to be known as the guy that did well, not the guy that got fired. Sick and tired, for real. I mean, listen, listen. I've been pastoring a church for 10 years. 10 years now. One church for 10 years. I made it. (laughs) But anytime someone uh, wants to identify me, that's the guy that got fired. They, wouldn't, they, they may not talk about my accomplishments now because they will always go back to, oh, you don't, oh yeah, I know that he has this. I know that he's doing this. I know he's doing that. But if, if you don't remember him, that's the guy that got fired. Oh, my goodness. Just like Naaman the leper was not a leper. He's not a leper. Naaman got healed. No, and just think about it. Naaman, oh, you mean the leper? Oh, come on, man. Give him a break. We're identifying people. Mary Magdalene. Oh, the whore. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone that we... Peter? Oh, that, that stank mouth Peter. That, that Peter? How about Peter the Rock? 
How about, sir, how about Mary, the one who was the first at the tomb when the disciples ran? How about those kind of accomplishments? But we always ID people at their worst and not their greatest. Come on, we're almost done. The Bible tells us that, that Jesus then begins to tell three stories. How many stories, everybody? Three stories. I'm going to paraphrase just for the interest of time, but I want you to go into your word. I don't want you to look at, uh, at, at Luke chapter 15 the way you've always seen it. But God says, he says that there are, there are 100 sheep. Which one of you, fellas, which one of you have 100 sheep? How many sheep? 100 and one leave. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I've never seen sheep till I got here. I'm, I mean, I've never seen sheep. You, I've seen, you, want, you want to know where I've seen a sheep? At a petting zoo. You know, petting zoo, you go, to a, you go to a zoo with all your, they touch the goat, they touch the sheep, and whatever. I've never seen sheep like this. I'm driving to Alabama, I see cows. I'm driving to Alabama, I see goats. I've never seen sheep like I see sheep now. They are grazing, looking at me. <laughs> Just, you know, you, they, they, they have no problem. They have no problem following the leader. This word, listen, this word tells us, according to this, it says that which one of you have 100 sheep? The Bible says that would you not leave the 99 in the wilderness? Leave the 99 where, everybody? In the wilderness. Now, I want to be clear that the 99 in the wilderness should be safe because they identified with the remnant that stayed. So you got to go out and get the one that is what, everybody? That's lost. Oh, I'm sorry. The sermon title is Lost Identity. We'll be back. Here we go. And here we go. We've, we find the one that is lost. It's lost. The one is lost. If I had 99 sheep, 99, and there were girls in there, females, male and female, sheep, shep, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> if one goes, see ya. I can make more. Mm. Isn't that sad that sometimes that's the mentality of our church that we can let the one go who had the child because, because we, can make, we can make more. We can make more of us. Can I say something? Don't, don't be mad. Isn't it sometimes scary that, that, it's, that, that, the, that the vows seem sometimes like an initiation process? Doesn't it sometimes? Whatever, whatever happened to, you love Jesus? Do you believe that he's taken away your sins? Do you believe that when you sin again, you have, so, when you sin, oh. Or you thought baptism was a good luck charm? I got baptized four times in my life, four. The last one was, you anyone know Pastor Ch 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 Pastor Chaka Ch Chan? Pa Y'all know Pastor Chaka Chan? No? Yeah. yeah? Man, he baptized me the last time. I swore he held me under the water longer. <laughs> Was in Israel and said, Pastor, would you like to get baptized? Yes, I want to get baptized in the River Jordan. My man held me down like you were washing me. You know what I mean? <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You know how many of you were baptized and it still didn't work? The only thing that works is salvation through Jesus Christ. So the Sabbath can't save you. Uh oh. It's what you do when you're saved. Your I deed, what, your I deed, your I deed, your I deed. And Jesus went out there and he's looking for the one sheep that was lost. One sheep that was lost. And the word of God tells us, listen closely. The word of God tells us that when he IDs him, you missed that. When he IDs his sheep. Because the Bible says that he doesn't come home until he finds, but you can't find your sheep unless you, I, come on, ID the sheep, which means that each one of us who have left the church in your minds, God can only ID you. Oh, man. And when he brings you back, the Bible doesn't say he allows you to walk by yourself. Can I tell you a quick story? I was in a mall the other day. I saw a lady with her kid with a string on him. You ever you seen one of them? You, know, you ever seen one of them? I was amazed. I was amazed by that. And then when I went to our church, had a function at this this uh, this uh, this park, and this young this young lady, she had her her two kids on two strings. Now now, now I understand what that's for. But my parents couldn't have that. No, my parents would be like, "Oh, right here, come here." And if I had a string on it, it'll hurt. I know my parents. Gah! The word says that he does not allow, I love the original language, he does not allow the, the sheep to go back because it'll veer off back 
to the club. <laughs> you, you'll veer right back to the house you came from. If you go back, if you, I mean, the, the scary thing about baptism is after there needs to be some kind of guidance. There's no one time clean and that's it. I mean, I got a white shirt that I brought here. My, I, I brought a white shirt here. I, there's supposed to be communion, so I bought a white shirt. And the back of the neck is crazy dirty. So I figured that if I fold it, you won't see it. So I tried it on with the, de- with the back dirty. And as I turned around, I looked, the dirt's showing. So the only way that I can wear that shirt without the dirt showing is to wash it. <laughs> Y'all look at me, is that easy? Is that easy? <laughs> Some of you are looking at me, is that, is that easy? Just wash it. But you can't ask God for forgiveness. Wow. It's important to understand that when he found the sheep, he did not let the sheep go back on his own because we get dirty on our way back. He takes the sheep and puts the sheep on his back and carries the sheep and says, listen, I have found the sheep which was lost. Remember now, the 99 was left in the wilderness also. We keep thinking the one went out by himself, but the 99 was also in the wilderness. But they, were, but they had each other. Be careful who you ID yourself with at church. They may not be the proper entity to be around i want to share this with you simply because listen closely the bible says that after he shouts out that here's the here is the one i have this is the one that was lost he went and brought that sheep back home but that sheep was identified as one that was with the fold and then left let me share something with you we have so many adventists out there i'm not talking about baptists i'm not talking about pentecostals i'm not talking about jehovah witness we have so many adventists out there that have no problem saying i was one and, and, and I'm going to say a great percentage do not leave based on teaching. They leave based on hurt. I'm going to be clear about that. You don't talk, you, I know Seventh-day Adventists who stop going to church, call me up talking about, can I get a letter for Sabbath? Yeah, you don't go to church. No, I'm serious. Can, can I get a letter for, for Sabbath to do what? You in a part of church, you don't come to church. I'm like that, for real. I'm not going to give you a letter because that made make me a liar. Are you with me? But think about it. More non adventists be, be get, no, no work on Saturday? Me, me, I'm Adventist, I'm Adventist. Come on, yeah, chief. But the fact of the matter is then you want to be identified when it works for you. Let me be clear. Second one, we're almost done. The word of God tells us about a woman, a woman. The Bible says a woman that lost the coin. Yeah, that guys? I love that. Woman loses a coin. Now, I want you to understand something, that when the woman lost the coin, the Bible says that she does spring cleaning. It's time for our church to, it's time for our church to do spring cleaning. No, when I'm talking about spring cleaning, I'm not talking about, please, please, y'all, I want you to hear this. I'm not talking about do spring cleaning and clean the books. So y'all don't know about this. You got to understand that there's a certain percentage every church got to pay for members who don't show up. That's why we don't have thousands of members on our, but why? Because it's a great, you have to pay insurance for every member. So you know what we do? We go and we clean the books. <laughs> oh, we ain't seen so-and-so in a long time? Scratch. Oh, so-and-so ain't been there? Scratch. We don't know where they are? Scratch. No, cleaning the books means first clean your attitude. And then, and then look for the ones you can't find. The other day, somebody was moving from my church, going to another church. I gotta, I'm going to love this. I'm going to love this. He said, uh, Pastor Graham, we have a transfer of membership. I met with the pastoral staff. I said, I'm blocking that one. He said, you can't do that. I said, yes, I can. Yeah, I'm blocking that. What do you mean? Are you saying that this person asked for the membership to be moved and you're blocking it? Yes. <laughs> I block memberships. If you, go to, if you are in a local church, you go to... I'm trying to figure out the churches here. You go to, give me some, well, give me one. So you go to where? South End. South End. You ain't say it happily. <laughs> she said she said South End. <laughs> All right, and, 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 and you go where? Luton. L- Luton. But she said she was at Luton. <laughs> if you change your membership to go to South End, you, your husband ain't there. Hold it. You ain't got no husband yet. All right, here we go. Um, um. You cannot switch membership because you like a pastor. 
and you can't switch a membership because you don't like a pastor. So if you don't like me and you're moving the membership or someone did something to you, you can't let them move. Listen, I was going with this girl. I was like, I was like 19. And when I was going with this girl, she decided to leave me. She decided to leave me. Break up with me. Go. Go on. <laughs> you know how hard I work? Please come back. Send flowers. Send this. Send that. And she still went with the other guy. Oh, no, 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 no. God blocked that. And what I'm saying is, <laughs> what I'm saying is, you have to work hard to let people know that you can't leave for reasons like that. Yeah. Because you will lose your identity going different places. Oh, come on now. You will lose your identity going to. So if there's someone here that said, you know what, I'm leaving this church and I'm going to another one. The same fools that was over there is over here. I'm trying to tell you, you're talking about, I'm not going to take a shower in this water. I'm going to go to another, listen, I'm going to another bathroom and take a shower in that water. It's water. So you got idiots in one church, you got idiots in another. And what I'm trying to say to you simply is that too often our coins are being lost and it's not, the, the coin cannot roll away by itself. Stay with me, we're almost done. I want you to know that no coin gets up and rolls away. It doesn't happen. You know who loses the coin? We lose the coin. And when she does spring cleaning, she turns everything up. She, she finds the coin. She says, I, listen, look, neighbors, I found the lottery, t- the, the coin, <laughs> which I have lost. Do you hear that? She puts, she puts ownership. I lost it. Why? Because I'm so busy cussing out people from pulpits, cussing out people in meetings, cussing out, I mean, you can't wear this, you can't wear that, you can't wear the other. I'm telling you, growing up in the church can leave you spiritually schizophrenic. I don't even know what's right or wrong anymore. But the fact of the matter is that you don't identify people by who you want them to be. Listen, but there's a flip side, almost done, there's a flip side. The flip side is there were days when you can identify an Adventist. There were days you can identify an Adventist. You can identify an Adventist. Do you, you know that? There were days when you can do that. It's totally different now. I'm at, I'm at, uh, I go to different revivals, and I was taught. Um, I was taught that when you see someone, are you Adventist? I'm going to use you now. Don't, don't let her mom see this. Come on. Here. Now, I will call you. What's your name? Alana. Alana. So I'm, I'm looking at Alana. She got, a little, she got a little stud in her ear. You know what I mean? So as an Adventist, you got to preach hard over here. You know, oh, yeah, because Jesus is coming. You know, Jesus is coming. And then you could, how come you didn't get up at the altar call? She'd be like, I go to so-and-so church. You'd be like, with jewelry? Then I go over here. So, so, then I go over here and I'm preaching. Yeah. I know I'm going to catch another one. My man, my man, got you, caught you. You Adventist? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got the big fat Goldie on right there, right? So I'm preaching hard, and when I run around this corner, I'm at, I'm at him, I'm at him. Be like, yo, man, you, you didn't, you didn't, you be like, yo, I'm at Venice a long time. Be like, wait a second. So then what do we all look like then? Yeah. Somewhere down the line, look, I, I, don't, don't look shamefaced at me. I, I, I'm not trying to come off on you. <laughs> the scary thing is that we don't know how to handle the change, the winds of change. Let me, sh- let me show you which, which you are, and then we're going to talk about this tomorrow and, and the next day. Listen closely. The only thing that identifies the remnant church is how you obey the scriptures. Not who you obey in the scriptures. It's how you obey the scriptures. So this, you may come to me and you may say to me, you may say to me, Pastor Graham, I don't see nothing wrong with jewelry. I'm like, all right, cool. Because at my church, they tough. They wear jewelry the whole night. They're like, yo, you can't be wearing jewelry. Pastor, take off your tie, take off your tie. I'm like, my tie is not jewelry, it's an accessory. Take it off, Pastor, take it off. <laughs> they always got something to say, Pastor, you like, that, you like that van you drive, right? Yeah, accessory, accessory. Why don't you, get a, why don't you drive, ride, ride a bike to church? <laughs> but we lose our coins all the time. We're losing our coins. But she says, I, we've, I found the coin that I have lost. I want you to know that don't blame the church for losing you. Because you're supposed to be strong enough. That a church can't lose you. 
And that's why I talk about that girl. That girl ain't want me, but I was strong enough to walk away. A year later, but I was strong enough to walk away. <laughs> Fact of the matter is, no church can gain you or no church should lose you. You're identified as one who these are they that, that love God and keep his commandments. No one identifies. I'm sorry, you, your identity is in Jesus Christ. And when I look at this, it brings me to one last story. I got four minutes left. I want you all to hear this. The Bible talks about a man that has two sons. How many sons? Two. I wanted two sons. God gave me a boy and a girl and gave me the girl first. I remember when the baby came out, I was like, yo, what's wrong? (laughs) In light of that, one boy, one man goes away. But the first thing he says is that I want the stuff that belongs to me. Just the other day, my parents met with us. Stay with me. My parents met with us, all of the, f- the, the, the children, and said, we know we're not going to live that long. We're going to show you the will. This is what so-and-so and whatever. In my mind, I didn't want to have the conversation because I did not want my parents gone. But the conversation must be had. Are you with me? The conversation had to be simply because Something is about to give. So the conversation must be had in who do you identify with? Some people don't, no, 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 don't pressure me, Graham. Don't pressure me. I'm not pressuring you. I'm not pressuring you to, to, to be ID'd with Jesus Christ. I'm just telling you that if you're not ID'd with Jesus Christ, then you're ID'd with someone else. There's no middle ground. This young man decided that he was going to leave, because I know you know the story. He decided he's going to leave, but not only did he leave, but the Bible says he went to a far country because there were too much of the people of church hanging around. You go to a far country, you don't party around people you know. Well, yes, you do. (laughs) But the fact of the matter is that Jesus wants to tell the Pharisees and, and, and Sadducees that you are identified as sinners just as well as everyone else. And the word says that when this young man went away and, and spent his character, too often we think that he spent money, but he spent his character. He spent everything that he was taught. He spent pathfinders. He spent everything. He spent good sermons. He spent everything on righteous living. And then when he had nothing left, he decided to come on. Let me share something with you. God don't want your what left. I'm sorry. God doesn't want your what left. See, I'm, you know, we keep preaching to you, telling you, oh, just come, just come, just come, just come. No, no, no. You need to change too. I'm mean, sick and tired of just, you know, just, you know it's just open for all sinners. Yes, but you can't stay that way. And the Bible tells us that when this boy came home, as he's on his way home, this is what I love about it, that the Bible says that the father ID'd him from afar off. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I need you to understand that the Bible says that when the boy was on his way home, the father ID'd him from afar off. No, 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 no. You missed it. You think that, oh, he saw him from afar off. No, he sees many people. But he was waiting for the one that he's been praying for for the longest time. And imagine that he's waiting every day on his porch waiting for his son. And he sees a familiar figure far off. And, he, and the Bible says he sees, but I'm telling you that he identified that one as his son. And when he comes home, he says, kill the fatted calf because my son was lost, but now he's found. Please, let me share this. I need you to know how important it is, how important it is to have the right ID. I, I, I feel like I'm at church. Hey, bro, where are you? You know, is this okay? You know, you feel like you're at church, right? You're like, hey, you know, um... My grandfather fought in World War I. Just goes to you. I'll play, but it'll only be chopsticks. <laughs> <clears throat> in World War I, my, father, my grandfather fought for the English because he was from Jamaica. I want you to hear this. My, my, my grandfather had a, f- a friend with him, and they went to Germany to fight. While they were in Germany, my grandfather took off his dog tag 
And his friend took off his dog tag, and they foolishly, they're young, like 17, 18 years old, and they switched dog tags. When they switched dog tags, my grandfather told us that a bomb came over, of course exploded, and he didn't remember every, anything at all except for the fact that he was in a German bed. It was months and months before he got home. But when he was able to get home, he knocked on the door, and when the door was open, everyone went crazy. Everyone went absolutely crazy simply because the friend that he switched the dog tags with didn't make it in that battle. But they couldn't send a body home, but they sent information home. And the information that they sent home to Jamaica was that your, your Frank Ira Graham has been killed in battle. But it was the wrong information because they switched dog tags. But when he got home, they were excited that he got home. They were glad that he was home, but he had the wrong dog tag but they were grateful to see him anyhow. I'm saying all that to say that in this life, don't allow anyone to switch your dog tags. Don't let any situation switch your dog tags. I'm all, listen, I want you to understand, don't let anyone switch your dog tags. I don't, nothing feels that good to switch your dog tags. Nothing tastes that good to switch your dog tags. Why? Because when Jesus comes, <laughs> he's going to check you by your dog tag. And it better be the right information. But he's going to check you by your dog tags. Why? Because some of your dog tags that you're walking around with right now is going to leave you local. But God wants you to switch your dog tags for the passports. The passports is not going to take you overseas but the passport that's going to take you out of this world. So how am I identified? I'm identified as a sinner saved by grace. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know why you came here. But I recognize that some of our identity has been cloaked in worldliness. Some of our identities have been cloaked in some of our habits. God is saying, I don't want to change your fingerprint. I just want to clean it. I just want to clean it. I want to pray for someone tonight. I want to pray that someone here tonight says, God, I want to be identified in you. to be identified in you. If that person is you, I'm not asking you to stand. I'm not asking you to come down. I'm just asking you to just, just put your hand up real quick so I can pray over your life. Praise God. I want you to pray over your life. I want to pray over your life. Father God, look at these words. Some of us are lost sheep. Some of us are coins, coins that the church has lost. Some of us just don't like the rules of the house. I'm talking about the house of the Lord. So we go to a far country, but we serve a God like you that will accept us. And what a day that's going to be when you give us new dog tags, a new name. But until then, Lord, I ask you, that you give us a double portion of your Holy Spirit that we will walk like you and talk like you and not act like you but be like you. So that when you come, we will see who we've been identified with. That's you, Jesus. Bless us, be with us, strengthen us, guard us, guide us this very evening we ask. In Jesus' name we do pray. Let everyone say amen and amen. Don't be a lost identity. Be found in him. God bless you. 